So this is the question. It's um, it's kind of written as a tutorial question. Um, it's a kind of common feature of the questions that you are seeing um, in this part of the uh, semester where, whenever the question involves somewhat complicated calculation. It's written as tutorial and um, what I'm kind of hoping to point at are the types of uh, calculation or estimates that you might do in an upper division class. That's uh, really my purpose for including these questions. So, so um, for this session today, now let me uh, work through this calculation and uh, let's see where we reach it. So it says average lifetime can be computed this way uh, for a uh, Radio decay following exponential curve. Okay, this is just an explanatory thing. Okay, the number of particles with the lifetime t is proportional to, oh, um, yeah, yeah, to be more, yeah, I think <laughs> what it's saying is, so the when you have the, the exponential decay curve, uh, so again, okay, all this is not strictly necessary to answer the question, but that's the, um, mathematical concept behind the calculations that you will be doing. If you imagine plotting the number of particles uh, that you have in your sample, number of uh, radioactive uh, isotopes that you have, uh, as a function of time, this number will be decaying over time and it, the decay will follow the exponential decay curve. It asymptotically reaches zero and this n as a function of time is equal to what they said there, your starting number and not uh, e to the, some uh, lambda is the related to the, the decay length and it'll be related to the decay time, e to the minus lambda and this minus t, this is the one that causes the decay. And what this portion is saying is that, um, so let's say you are interested in looking at, okay, let me just put a marker down t. This is the lifetime t that I'm interested in. And I'm looking at, okay, how many particles had this exact lifetime? And uh, you have the number of particles at this, um, at this moment in time. And that's not really telling you how many particles had this lifetime. So what you really have to look at is, okay, imagine that a portion of the plot blown up you kind of have something that looks like this. Uh, you have something that actually looks kind of like a line. Um, and this is uh, showing the variation of the number of particles from T to uh, T plus DT, some infinitesimal amount of time. And the number of particles changes here. This is my delta N. And um, so this change in number of particles, that is the number of particles that had this exact lifetime T. And um, the, a way to estimate this delta N is to get the slope of the line, get the slope of the line and multiply that to the uh, time interval DT. That'll give you delta N. Um, or in the calculus notation or calculus-ish notation, this change of the number of particles at time t is equal to the rate of change of number of particles plus, not plus, times the duration of time, delta t, or turning it into this differential notation, it becomes the, the number of, um, so, um, so this turns it into dt. So that's what it's describing here. <laughs> so, um, so average lifetime, so that, um, yeah. So that's the number of particles with lifetime t. Um, hopefully this explanation makes sense, at least together with this, hopefully one or the other makes sense. Um, the average lifetime is the lifetime average over all these particles. So there are uh, particles with a lifetime of zero second. There are particles with a much longer lifetime than anything else. And it says we can compute it as a weighted average where the weight is the number of particles that decay time t. So um, number of particles that decay time t. So I said it's a proportional to that. 
So number of particles that decay time t uh, times t. So this is our uh, weighted average procedure that we talked about when we covered the quantum mechanics. So we have the, the, the number or some kind of weight that's proportional to the number times the quantity that we are trying to measure. The, that's uh, one sum. Now, if I just have that, it's not necessarily the, the weighted average. I have to normalize it. And the normalization is, uh, this is, this quantity here is um, what you're using to normalize what you're adding. So that's what I'm describing here. Where we need to divide by this because our weight in this weighted average is not normalized. So by dividing by this, we make sure that it's normalized. So, so that's the calculation you're doing. Again, um, for the purpose of answering the questions, you don't technically need to understand it, but since it's <laughs> written as a tutorial to hopefully get at uh, some of this, I thought I would explain it. And let me go through the calculation. So once you have a, uh, kind of what you are calculating, then the calculation itself is kind of straightforward. The hardest part was setting it up and setup has been all done for you. So um, it says compute the integral in the numerator and express your answer in terms of lambda and, and uh, t dependence goes away since you're integrating over values of t. Um, yeah, that is right. Um, so I guess I'll just do the integral. Um, I'm trying to look at, uh, oh, this might be a good chance to do integration by part. I don't think I've ever done integration by part in this class. I mean, it's not the quickest way to do this, but since I've never done it, let me do that. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done integration by part. So I'm integrating capital T from zero to infinity. Uh, let me pull out all the constant coefficients, lambda and not, uh, t times e to the minus lambda t dt. So integration by part. Oh, let me try to remember this. So the formula goes as if you have an expression u times dv, then when you do integration by part, it becomes u. I can't write u. Um, it becomes uh, u times v. Um, minus integral of V du over the same limit. And the hope is that, so you are transferring the, into, um, the differential over to the other thing. And uh, the hope here is that eventually something simplifies and you don't have this going kind of infinitely. So here, I think the setup is quite simple. Uh, I'm gonna set up my, u to be equal to t and my dv to be equal to e minus lambda t dt. Um, so I need to do this uh, integral in order to get my v is equal to, hmm, trying to do this in my head, is it um, minus one over lambda e to the minus lambda t? Imagine taking derivative of this, minus lambda comes down. And okay, yeah. So, um, okay, so I think I have enough to start writing stuff down. And as I'll say it then, this is the long way to do it. There's actually a much shorter way to do it. Um, I will give you that after I'm done integration by part, just because I've never done integration by part in this class. I want to make sure that I can still do it. It's been a while. <laughs> So um, I still have lambda times n naught, nothing happens to those. And as I do integration by part, I do, um, so u times v, and um, I think these are supposed to be evaluated the limits as well, I think. <laughs> it's been a while. So u is t times v, um, which, uh, yeah, I think it's, I'm gonna be fine. So t times v, uh, minus one over lambda e to the minus lambda t. And I'm going to be evaluating this at the limit from zero to infinity. And for a moment, infinity had me worry 
because t going to infinity, that makes me worry. But e to the minus lambda times something that approaches infinity, this is going to go to zero more quickly than t blows up. So actually at infinity, this whole thing will be zero. And oh, at the other limit, it's zero as well. Oh, so I guess this whole thing just goes away. It just all zero. So, okay, let me just keep going. <laughs> I have minus times minus. So I have plus uh, integral from zero to infinity still of V uh, minus one over lambda. DU is just the D, oh, wait, wait, finish writing down. E to the minus lambda T. Uh, DU is, uh, uh, I guess I forgot to write this portion out. It's kind of easy. Take the derivative of that, I get du is equal to uh, dt. So it's just um, the second part is just the dt. Uh, oh, and this is an integral I know how to do. It's a, um, it's a, um, it's exponential thing. So let me do that integral on the fly and write it down. It's a lambda times and not the vanished and close the parenthesis. So the, um, let me pull out the factor of minus uh, one over lambda. Um, so factor of minus one over lambda times the antiderivative of e to the minus lambda t. That's gonna be, oh, the same thing I did before. So it's gonna be minus one over lambda e to the minus lambda t. Yeah, just imagining taking the derivative here, then I get e to the minus lambda t back. And I'm evaluating this at limits from zero to infinity. And at the limit of infinity, this does go to zero, but at the limit of zero, I don't have the pesky factor of t anymore. So this is actually gonna go, in, go to, um, this is gonna become zero or minus zero, uh, minus minus, so plus, uh, plug in zero, so, um, one over lambda. So, so this quantity, when I finish calculating it, should be one over lambda. So the whole product should be, um, so I have a lambda divided by lambda squared and minus n naught over lambda. Um, let me make sure everything looks right. Um, so lambda has a unit of inverse time. And I think the units are working out right. I have unit of uh, time total there. I don't know why I have an additional minus sign. What did I do wrong? Uh, oh, I know what I did wrong. There's a joke. Good physicist is the, um, one who makes even number of sign errors. <laughs> I made an odd number of sign errors. So I think what I have here is not right because it was a minus of the integral. And I turned the minus into plus anticipating that I was plugging in a negative thing. And then I forgot about me doing that pre ahead of time and put in minus there where it should be in plus. So I had this minus sign that uh, shouldn't have been there. So, okay, so, so, so okay. Uh, carrying through all the calculation, I have uh, n naught over lambda. That's my answer um, for the numerator. Uh, let's submit it and make sure that I got it right. Go ahead. <laughs> so far so good. And I think uh, when I'm looking at the denominator, it looks like it, this is a calculation I've done. Um, let me look at, yeah, so I did a, this integral here and um, doing that in, or, you know, without one over lambda, doing that integral gave me uh, one over lambda from integrating e to the minus lambda t from zero to infinity. So, so one over lambda from that cancels out that lambda. So I end up with just the n naught. So it should be just the n naught. Good. <laughs> and finally, combining our answers in A and B, it's uh, answer in A divided by answer in B, it's uh, one over lambda. And in fact, 
the most common way most common way this uh, expression is actually written is not with lambda it's uh, actually most commonly written in this uh, uh, it's uh, most commonly written this way uh, as and not e to the minus t over lifetime i guess tau is the most common letter we use and what we call lifetime uh, as in you know referring to this factor here that is the average lifetime uh, it's a it's a distinct from what you might have heard as half life before this is more mathematically useful convenient uh, form and uh, this factor tau it ends up being actually the average lifetime as well when you go through the calculation it's kind of a fun fact um so so yeah that's the calculation i did it the uh, much longer way than I had to. So, so I will tell you why this is much longer. You can kind of see a hint of that from the fact that when, as you do the integration by part, you get these zeros at the boundary terms. That's kind of your hint that, oh, there must be an easier way. And I will tell you the easier way. Uh, the easier way is this. This integral is actually much easier to do. Uh, You've seen me do that integral here. It's just a single integral. Everyone knows how to do. So this integral, you could almost write it out as this formula, you know, zero to infinity. Um, I, guess, uh, I guess if I want, I can keep lambda and then not here as well. Wait, do I want? No, I don't want to keep lambda. So, so let me just uh, um, describe integral of, um, without all the coefficients, so just the e to the minus the lambda t um, et and without all the coefficients that should just give me um, that should just give me one over lambda and uh, this is the trick that I think you've seen seen us use earlier um, I think we used this when we were doing the uh, chapter seven, uh, second half of the chapter seven. Uh, this is a trick called integrating by differentiating under the integral sign. So you imagine doing this operation, and this is not really a representation of physical picture, but it's a kind of a mathematical formalism that allows you to take advantage of the fact that there's a kind of a relationship between this and this expression. And the relationship is that expression here has this multiplied in front. So as I'm staring at it, trying to see how am I gonna get a factor of t multiplied in front, um, what I get is, oh, I can get a factor of t to be multiplied in front following the rules of calculus. If I do this, I take the derivative with respect to lambda and multiply by minus one. You know, lambda is a, it's not a variable, but formalism doesn't care what is an actual variable and what is uh, uh, what is constant. So formalism wise, this is a perfectly valid operation to do. And when you do this perfectly valid operation, what you end up with on the left hand side is going to be uh, the minus signs cancel. So you have um, you are differentiated with respect to lambda. So you get a factor of t out in front t times e to the minus lambda t uh, dt. And I can do this because I can imagine swapping these order of operations and it should, doesn't affect anything. I have to do the same operation on the right-hand side in order not to affect the inequality. So um, derivative of this is gonna be minus one over lambda squared, another factor of minus. So it, I'm gonna get plus one over lambda squared. So here's your integration formula that you can just use right away for part A. You don't even have to go through all of this. So that would be much quicker. In fact, do I say that in a hint? No, I don't. But yeah, it's uh, one of the tools of the trade and tools and tricks of the trade. <laughs>